This is E3720, week 9, lecture 1. Last lecture, I mistakenly said in week 8, lecture 3, we'll cover the lead compensator, but we had an exam, the second exam in week 8, lecture 3. So now we're going to do the lead compensator. And it's very simple to understand the lead compensator through an example. So it is the same unity feedback system that we used for the unit ramp steady state, uh, unit ramp input steady state error compensation using a lag compensator. So now, we want to find the, well, the settling time. We design a lead compensator to decrease the settling time by three. The compensator zero is given. So initially, here's the solution. Okay, is operating with a closed loop step response of 15%. So let me, know, I mean, you can recall this from last lecture, but let me just do this again. Well, like this is, will be for my own practice, but you should repeat this enough times so this becomes. Cold in your head, like down cold. You get it. That's what I meant. Therefore, C over R is K over S squared plus seven S plus K. Therefore e to the minus zeta pi over square root of 1 minus zeta squared is 0.15 and repeating this is kind of annoying because we did this last time but hey so i believe zeta we got okay let me look at my notes 0 0.517 yep that's what it was uh let's see two, two, two. now we want settling time so part a ts is 4 over zeta omega n um, this implies, but you know that to, 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 to this is zeta omega n. So if you multiply and divide by two, so this is eight. Actually, we didn't even need zeta for T S. But anyway, all right. So this is two zeta omega n. And you know that 2 zeta omega n is 7, which implies settling time is approximately 8 over 7, which is 1.143 seconds. And let's see what they have in the book. Yeah, 1.143 seconds. But anyway, um, we got the zeta, so let's just, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, note that mm, zeta is 0 0.517. One implies k is for this is 44 is 45.84. There, we also found this last time. Okay, that's done. But now we want to design a lead compensator to decrease the settling time by a factor of three. So let's look at this. So for part B, let's think about this using the concepts of root locus. This is going to be K, S plus ZC. Over again, this is not going to be the same K. It's going to be K tilde. And you're going to see that this K tilde is going to be, so let me write this out. K this is going to be in red. To, complete, to distinguish this from the lag compensator, k tilde is not going to be equal to k, right? And you'll see why, right? This is pretty straightforward, but we have to go through this once to understand this. And so here it is. Oh, God. You know what? So let me just do this since this might crash. page there. Now save it. Okay, beautiful. Okay. So we do this. Or C. Okay. See this again. I'll trust this there. Want so this is okay. Good, crashed. Just 
me an opportunity to open this. So we want uh, TS to be one third of the old settling time, which is 1.14 seconds, 1.143 seconds. But this implies that uh, zeta omega n must increase by a factor of three because the if you look recall your so this recall that this is real part imaginary part so here is minus zeta omega n here are your dominant second order poles here here so you want it to move this way for decreasing settling time okay so that's simple but let's systematically uh, therefore uh, going back using this value of k plugging it in uh, now original closed loop poles is p1 is p2 where at um, negative 3.5 plus or minus j 5.8 okay therefore as desired it's going to be three times this so it's going to be uh, because this is minus zeta omega n so you multiply it by three you're going to get negative 10.5 but the point is let's systematically increase this also by a factor of three so you 17 negative 7 plus or minus plus or minus 17.4 j okay that's what you want the desired poles to be at therefore let's in other words the desired closed loop poles so let's do this let's, let's draw a pole zero plot so you have the system at ne, zero and negative seven we know that the pole the zero must be at negative 10 Compensator, so that's given, and we have translated. So we don't. We know that the pole should be somewhere here. We just don't know where, and we have translated the requirements as assuming this is to scale negative 10.5 plus or minus j, okay, plus or minus 17.4 j. So it's going to be as desired of one, as desired of two. Okay, however. Uh, we can see, so this is going to be, so let me just use this. Since this is 17.4j and this is negative 10.5. Okay, but the point I'm trying to make is, therefore, we touched upon this last lecture. Limited here, therefore, the angle criterion implies the phase angle of whoops k tilde times s plus zc, which we know as 10 or as desired, uh, the phase angle to any point on the root locus oops, one. Pole times the compensator pole times this fellow. Err. As desired of one, as desired of one of seven equals must be an odd multiple of any degrees. Okay. So that's the angle criterion. So for this implies that. Um, so if you plug this in, so the phase angle contributed from this fellow is zero degrees. So we'll have only one unknown, and now we can easily. So let's just plug this in. So you have, let's see, 
the phase angle of negative 10.5 plus G17.4 plus 10 so it's the phase angle of this minus the phase angle so let me just write it out and then you can compute it in the sense the phase, the phase angle of the bottom is simply going to be negative 10.5 plus G17.4 times negative uh, 10.5 plus G17.4 times, well, we don't know now what this phase angle is, but we know that they all have to add up to an odd multiple So in other words, the phase angle of the top minus the phase angle of the bottom should be an odd multiple of 180 degrees. So we can figure out how much this missing phase angle should contribute. So let's say this is equal to 180. So let's pick n equals 0 for simplicity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly compute the phase angle of all these complex numbers and just leave it as leave this one because we don't know PC yet. So let me pause the lecture, compute that. So The phase angle here, although I made well, one mistake I made was I forgot the 7 here, so I just added that in. And then computing all these phase angles with my calculator, I get negative 130.83 degrees, 130.836 degrees, minus uh, negative 130.836 degrees minus the phase angle contribution from this compensator pole should be equal to, <coughs> I made this negative 180, excuse me, so I chose n equals minus 1, so n equals 0. So I get a nice acute angle contribution because looking at this picture, so let's draw this picture uh, over here that I'm not going to color code anything in this sense. I know this is negative 10.5. I have minus PC, but basically this angle over here I know is 49.2 degrees. And I know this length is 17.4. Therefore, by simply using, let's say, the inverse tangent, I can find my pole location. Therefore, uh, let's see, duh, 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 inverse tangent or the tangent of 49.2 is going to be opposite side or adjacent side. So it's going to be. PC, the composite pole location, minus 10.5. So look, doing this computation quickly, which I already did, I get PC is approximately 25.52. Now, we're not done in the sense we have to find K tilde, but now K tilde is very easy. Therefore, using the, mag the root locus magnitude criterion, I want to save this. Hopefully, it doesn't die. There, awesome. You have one plus k tilde. I know my zero. I know my pole. Um, times one over s times s plus seven. Evaluated at the desired one of the desired poles should be equal to zero. So, which implies if we use the magnitude criterion the k tilde, and this is the important point, it's going to be 476.3. Therefore, my lead compensator of s is going to be 476.3 times oops, st should be s plus 10 over s plus 25.52 Uh, so hopefully it doesn't crash now. Okay, it didn't. Awesome. So let's just check this in MATLAB and then we're done. So I have our, well, this was the old system from the previous lecture. Actually, let's just move these guys. It's much easier than deleting and obviously recreating. So the real 0 is going to be at negative 10. 
and this fellow is going to be at negative um, 25.52 this is too big so it's 476 and if you notice the root locus what's again nice is you have this closed loop well one thing you gotta watch out for is so let's just look at the closed loop poles so here they are now you have the correct damping of point uh, 5 one z like uh, the settling time increased by a factor of that's what I was looking for the settling time di uh, sorry ah. yeah that's right the settling time decreased by a factor of 3 but 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 what about this higher order pole but recall that we do have a 0 at negative um, 10 from the compensator now the question is is this higher order pole close enough to the 0 and notice we're not really doing pole 0 cancellation I mean negative 11.5 and negative 10 are pretty far off as you can see in the picture but then as you're going to shortly see we will check that the second order approximation again is a rule of thumb in the sense in this case this closed loop pole is definitely not five times further away the magnitude of this closed loop pole is not five times the magnitude of the dominant second order poles I mean you can't even call these poles dominant however the fact that we have this compensator zero close to this uh, closed loop pole might give us a reduction in settling time but we have to use MATLAB to check that so let's do that so, uh, 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 so the initial system so let's use the step command but first let's see let's go back here and what did I have so 45.84 the settling time of 1.1143 seconds but now I have this new compensator 476.3 so let's do this so let's go back here what's my G I believe my G is defined yeah there's my G so let me call um, <coughs> so let's do this uh, so let me call my lead compensator equals 476.3 times s plus 10 divide by s plus 25.52 okay there this there's that now let me step my initial system which is simply the feedback of 45.84 simple P controller times my G 1 but now my next system is feedback of lead times G comma 1 so let's do its thing oh it's a little slow maybe because I'm definitely recording it. So there it is. And you can see the green is actually my um, system with the lead compensator. Let's see that. So let's see the settling time. So there it is. Okay. So the, come on, there. So for my first system, it was 1.16 seconds, which is what we computed. But notice for the second system, ooh, what the hell? So let's do this. There you go. So for the second system, you get 0 0.391 seconds and you can see that this is approximately one-third this so let's do that and that's our final uh, note from MATLAB TS is 0 0.391 seconds and TS desired is one-third I think we did this somewhere. Uh, uh, 1.143 seconds. Uh, so 1.143, which is approximately. So let me do. 
one. divided by 3 just point three eight one seconds and we're pretty close right so let's see if your book has an answer yeah well this is what he has but he doesn't have so I guess you might have in the online you see I mean online companion website but anyway so there it is it looks pretty good agreement okay but again we need to check in MATLAB because the whole second order approximation is doesn't is not valid okay it's not the same idea as this closed loop pole being quote unquote close to the compensator zero. Okay, the next lecture we'll finish chapter nine by discussing a lag lead compensator. Right. See you then.